Do you ever lose a huge pot and feel horrible about yourself? Yeah, I just got a haircut, and my god, this guy absolutely butchered it. How do you go from this to this? I literally told the guy, fade the sides and keep the top, and he was like, hey, no problem at all, buddy. I close my eyes, wake up, nightmare. I just paid $30 for my confidence to be absolutely shocked. Anyways, we sat down at Chasers, played 1-2 like an absolute demon. The very first hand that I sat down, we looked down at pocket kings under the gun. I'm not even joking, 10 seconds in. Didn't even unrack my chips, and I was like, 15. The guy next to me stopped, turned to me, he's like, this kid's full of shit, I call. <laughs> then the next guy, then the cutoff. All right, it's time to go home. I'm all in. And I was like, yes, it is, buddy, because I have pocket kings. Folds back to me. I just make the call. I don't want to jam. The guy next to me has $300 behind. He covers me. I want to play for all of it. I don't want 60. I want 300. So I just call. And the guy next to me looks at me again. He's like, an idiot. Call. <laughs> we, we go three ways to a flop of... Jack 10 3. I bet $50. He snap calls. Turn brick. I jam. He snap calls. River brings in the front door flush. I'm like, I have kings, no spade. And he's like, that's the nuts. The other guy mucks and we take down a huge pot. Turns out no one really learns their lesson. I picked up pocket kings once again, five minutes later, blinked twice, and somehow ended up with $950 in front of me. I got called for the 2-5 game, and just like that, we're in for 300, sitting at 900 something something. Here we have ace, king of clubs in under the gun plus one. I open 20, hijack makes the call. Flop comes king, 10, 9, rainbow. We have a dream hand with top, top, but this dream can quickly turn into a nightmare against hands like 10, 9, or you know, Queen Jack for the absolute ultra nutter butter stone cone cohobe joe hone lone bone shone done. That's a really long word to say that we're absolutely fucked. However, that is not going to stop me from putting in a bet. We can get a lot of value from weaker kings or straight draws. I bet twenty dollars and immediately get raised to sixty. Yikes. Not loving it, but also not hating it, especially with the club on board, because even if he does have a hand like Queen Jack, by the river, if we backdoor our flush, our nuts would be bigger than his nuts, so we can always out-alpha him on the river, if need be. So I make the call. Turn peels off yet another club. It's a four. Hello. I checked the hijack, playing in flow. This time he checks it back. I don't think he'd ever do this with a set, two pair, or a straight. So, feeling a lot better about my hand, even more so when the river is the ace of diamonds. Now I really think the hijack has a hand like jack-10, or maybe just a weak king that wanted to get to showdown. For that reason, I don't want to check it over to him, have him check it back, and be like, oh yeah, I have top two pair, buddy. I throw out a bet of two-thirds pot, and immediately get raised to $250. For the reasons already mentioned, I think I have the best hand, and when that's the case, my chips are generally going in the middle. I make the call, and the hijack shows ace-9. We both rivered two pair, but that whole analogy I used earlier, turns out my nuts were slightly bigger. So we take the pot down. I literally don't even get finished racking my chips before the next shuffle we get dealt ace-8 of spades. I raised the $30. The low jack, the same player from last hand, by the way, he makes the call. Foreshadowing. The button and straddler also come along. So we're going four ways to a flop, which comes ace, ten, eight, all hearts. Holy mother of God. Dealer, are there any other... Can we keep the same cards, but like change the suit? You know what I mean? I read that on monotone boards, down bets work the best. But I think that applies to heads up. Four ways, what the actual f*** am I supposed to do here? I bet a quarter pot, then the low jack min raises me to $80. Everyone else folds, action gets back to me. Um, okay, that, uh, sir, I'm not going anywhere for $40. I am going to make the call. 
developed an accent halfway through this hand, and that is less confusing than what the turn brings. It's the king of hearts. Now, there's no possible realm where I feel like I have the best hand. And when that's the case, I'm just going to go like this. Surprisingly, the low jack checks it back. If the low jack bet, I was going to call and just see if we could boat up on the river. Now we get to see it for free, which, voila, it's the ace of diamonds. Hello, we make a boat. I don't want to give the low jack an opportunity to check any flush back. I am going to just, you know, do one of these things where I just, yeah, I'm all in, buddy. Low Jack goes, ah, f <laughs> and then sticks in a call. I show, and the Low Jack said he had the queen of hearts. He checked back the turn to get tricky. Thank God the board paired. We take this one down. Next, we have nine, eight of clubs in the cutoff. I raised the $30. The small blind and straddler make the call. Block comes queen, jack, four, rainbow. This is a connected board, and we have a gut shot to a straight. So when action checks to me, I'm going to put in a c-bet of $40. Only the straddler makes the call. Going heads up to a turn, which... <laughs> dude, it's the ten of diamonds. Do you think we're running good today? Is it just me, or are we making hands? Anyways, straddle checks it to me. I size up and this time he lets it go. Usually I have to bluff my socks off to win a single pot. It feels good to have one or two handed to you by the poker gods. Next we have three two of diamonds. Yes. Under the gun limps. I throw in the extra five dollars. Straddler checks his option. Hori, why are we playing such bad hands? This is how we get ourselves in trouble. I don't- Shut up, nerd. You clearly know nothing about poker. We go three ways in a limped pot to a flop of ace, five, four. We flop a straight and open-ended straight flush draw. What the hell is happening? This is a limped pot, and there's not really that much money invested for any player, so I don't think anyone is going to be strong here. There's a high hand promo for $1,000, and I kind of just want to see if we can hit that. I check, action checks all the way around, and the turn peels off, I kid you not, the six of diamonds. Okay, I am f***ing with you. It's the seven of clubs. I really wish it was the six, but it's not. We don't run that good. Once again, I check. Now the big blind bets $10. Under the gun calls, action gets back to me. I look at the board and realize, huh, a hand like 6-5 or 7-6 has a pair and an open and straight draw, so I actually think that there's value to be had in a raise here. A lot of hands can call, hey, screw it, let's try to get some value. I check raise to $40. Straddler folds, action's now on under the gun. In my head, I'm thinking, please God, please don't fold, please dear God, please don't fold. He makes the call, Almost threw away my shot as straight flush over $30. Thank God he makes the call. Come on, dealer. Give me a straight flush. Nope. We get the eight of diamonds. We improve to a flush. How hard is our life? There's now a four liner on board, and I think this player could have improved to a straight. I decided to bet $125. Not really sure how I feel about this bet. I feel like 75 would have gotten called. I think I got a little too greedy. Under the gun ends up finding the fold, but uh, who knows? We take it down. We have pocket jacks in the small blind. The button raises to $30, and I put in the three bet to 130 The straddler cold calls my three bet. Alarm bells are going off. The button also calls. We go three ways to a flop of nine, three, three, two spades. For whatever reason, I have a horrible, horrible feeling about this flop. When the straddler cold calls my three bet, I think he's going to have a lot of pocket pairs, specifically eights through tens. I look down at my hand to see if I have a spade. I do. This is relevant because it blocks a lot of spade draws like queen jack, king jack, jack ten of spades. So I'm not really that concerned about the front door flush. But for whatever reason, I get this nagging feeling that someone flopped a boat. However, I do still want to throw out a bet, protect my hand, 
and also just see where I'm at. I bet $150. The straddler folds, but the button makes the call. Turn peels off the 10 of clubs. Not a great card, as now we could lose to pocket 9s or pocket 10s. Also, let's not mention the fact that I thought my opponent flopped a f***ing boat, which I'm clearly well behind, so I'm going to trust my intuition and just slow down and... Thankfully, the button checks it back. Going off to a river card, which peels off an 8. Ugh, just an awful run out for my hand. I feel like I'm getting called by 8s, 9s, or 10s, and now all of those hands make a boat. However, he could have a hand like 10-9 or 9-8. Him checking the turn with those hands basically tell me, yeah, buddy, I know you have ace high, bet the river so I can call you. If I check, all of his full houses are betting anyways, and it might be a size of like four or 500. That would be a really annoying spot, which I would love to avoid. But if he has a hand like 9-8 or 10-9, he might just check it back and take showdown, and we miss value on hands like that. There are possible hands that we can get value from. There are also hands we are absolutely crushed by. What do you do? Well, if we bet, we set our own price. If he calls, we get value from worse hands. And if he raises, we can comfortably fold. So here, I actually like a bet fold strategy. I bet $250, and the button immediately looks at his chips. I'm thinking, oh god, he's going to jam in my mouth. He cuts his black chips, counts them. I'm like, don't! I felt like a character in the Matrix watching the bullet leave the chamber as the button announces. All in. All in. <laughs> Fuck! Uh, kind of had a bet fold. Now I gotta do the second part of that thing. I kind of feel like you it. That's, that's so weird. Like, I don't even think you needed to turn a river. I think for a minute, if he could ever turn a hand like 10 9 or 9 8 into a bluff but he doesn't have enough behind, and that feels way too fancy, so I just stick to the plan. Told myself that a bet fold is the best strategy. Long behold, the big blind shows pocket nines. You did flop it, you sicko! I got the feeling! That's so sick. I was like, I didn't think you needed the turn of river. That's so sick. Next, we have king-queen offsuit in the low jack. I raised the $20. Big blind makes the call. Flop comes queen 7-2 rainbow. Big blind leads out for $35, which is nearly a pot size bet. Immediately alarm bells are going off. I look down at my cards and I'm like, yeah, I have, I have, I have king queen. What, what the f what's, what's going on here? There are zero bluffs that make sense, but what value hands could he possibly have? I don't know, I guess we'll find out. See you on the river, buddy. I make the call. We're going off to a turn, which peels off the ace of clubs. That seems not good. The big blind continues for a wager of $90. <sighs> this player was recreational and quite snug. He wasn't blasting off by any means. So I didn't really feel like this was a bluff. I muck my cards as my brain is absolutely bamboozled. And the big blind flips over ace-king offsuit. Bluffing on the flop, turn top pair, and we managed to get away and lose the absolute minimum. Nice hit, sir. All right, I know this video is very short, but I promise two videos a week from here on out. 15 to 20 minutes, they're gonna be longer. In for $300, out for just over 1,300. That's a profit of 1,000. Continue to move in the right direction, boys. Please leave a like and subscribe. It would help this channel grow a lot. See you in the next one.